Hey guys, so I've got another project to show you. This is about my audio cube. Uh, if you'll remember, it'll be up here somewhere. Uh, it's a project to create uh, a cube, which, well, it's a dice really, but <laughs> I didn't like the name of audio die. Uh, so it will know which side it's up and it will say something. So it'll play a recorded audio file uh, from an SD card. So it will be playing uh, WAV files dependent on the side it faces. Um, I've made the the power board for it. So it's a, the cube has three separate boards. It has a power board, a speaker and amplifier board, and also the brain board is what I'm calling it, which would be an AT Mega 328 and uh, it'll be an ADXL 345 it'll, and it'll also have the SD card on there. Um, now this actually works. <laughs> I'm quite surprised. So this is an LT1302, which is a linear technology uh, boost chip. Um, it's also got a Max1811 uh, lithium polymer battery charger on there. And it's got some other oh, well, voltage regulation for 3.3 volts. And it's also got some jazz on here, some jazz, some stuff on here to, uh, to turn the circuit on and off. Now it should uh, be a single latching uh, button so it latches on and off. Unfortunately the button only turns the circuit on and won't turn it off so I've done something wrong there but everything else seems to work so it will charge lithium polymer batteries and it will boost it to 5 volts. It will kick out around 500 milliamps maybe 600. Uh, the data sheet says it could get to 600 I'm not convinced uh, but you never know I might just be testing it incorrectly who knows and it also kicks out 3.3 volts as well so I'm very, very happy. Well, have a look at this on the scope and see what kind of uh, kind of noise levels we're getting it actually, but it does work. So I'm really, really pleased. I've also got uh, my brain board printed at OSH Park and it looks really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. Uh, I'm getting someone to do uh, the surface mount ADXL 345, 345, 345. Um, because it has no exposed pads, um, they're all on the bottom of the chip, so it needs to be done in some kind of oven. And I don't fancy trying that, so uh, someone else is going to get that done for me. As soon as it's done, I can populate this and start programming the chip, so we'll see how it goes. Let's have a look at the power board. So the power board provides power for the entire cube. Uh, it runs off a lithium ion battery, in fact one of these Uh, and in fact I designed the connector for this very kind of uh, battery. I think the, the middle one's probably a, a temperature sensor. I don't, I don't use that one, it's not, it's not even grounded. So uh, on the board here we have a micro USB, or is that mini USB? It might be, min yeah I think it's mini USB. We have the, the Max 1811 which is a lithium ion battery charger, it runs off USB voltage. Here we have um, the circuit that doesn't particularly work, which is a, a single momentary button which should uh, latch the circuit on and off using this, uh, this MOSFET here and these transistors there. Now it doesn't work unfortunately. It does turn the circuit on but it won't turn off. It may be because I've not attached a proper load to this yet, so when it is under load the uh, the capacitance that's in that circuit should discharge and not keep it going, I imagine. But that's a bit of a guess. Um, we've also got the LT1302, which is a a, uh, a boost chip for well anything from like 1.8 volts, but it'll be a minimum of three volts. Uh, we also have a, a small 3.3 uh, volt regulator here. I can't remember the name of it there, but Oh, and I'm also using some low, S low ESR um, capacitors here uh, just to make sure that the any kind of uh, voltage ripple we're getting in is going to be minimized. Okay, unfortunately um, my scope's not working so we won't be looking at uh, the voltage ripple on here. Um, I don't really know what's wrong with it. The, the beam won't focus so I assume that the focusing dial's broken or something else equally annoying is wrong with it but we'll see uh, I'll try and fix it another time so I've got a multimeter here we can just check out the voltages uh, if I just 
get on ground and I'll probe one of the uh, the lines that goes out, the 5 volt line. So there's nothing going there at the moment and there's also nothing on the 3.3 volt line. So when I hit the button here, that will turn the circuit on, hopefully. So we'll see if I probe ground again and we probe 5 volts. Uh, oops, 5 volts. So that is giving me... Am I not probing that in the right place? No, there we go. It is giving me 4.953 volts out of the uh, the boost converter, which isn't bad. That's close enough to five. I don't know how that's going to deal with any kind of current draw, but we'll see. I'll wait till I've got the oscilloscope working before I go into any detail on this. Um, and let's have a look at the what should be a 3.3 volt line. And we're getting 3.299, which is pretty much perfect. Uh, I wouldn't expect anything better than that. And again, the five volt line. Uh, yeah. Okay, so let's try and switch it off. <laughs> so if I press that button again, I may need to press it a bit quicker than that. No, we're still getting voltage through there. No, I can't switch it off, so that part doesn't work, but I'm quite happy with it as it is, um, and I'll keep you guys informed.